Hello, my lovelies. Ginny O here, the author with no last name. And this is Ginny O Reviews, the part of the channel where I review an indie science fiction or fantasy book and try to answer the question, did I like this book and why? This month, in the spirit of mermaid, I am reviewing mermaid books. This week's selection is D.N. Bren's Our Bloody Pearl, a young adult mermaid and pirate steampunk fantasy. I actually don't know Danny, though I do follow her on Twitter. However, when I mentioned in passing I wanted to review her book for my channel, she kindly offered it. So thank you! You can find Danny at her website dnbrin.com or on Twitter at dn underscore Bryn. From the back of the book. The ocean is uncontrollable and dangerous, but to the sirens who swim the warm island waters, it's a home more than worth protecting from the humans and their steam-propelled ships. Between their hypnotic voices and the strength of their powerful tails, sirens have little to fear. That is, until the ruthless pirate Captain Kian creates a device to cancel out their songs. Pearl was the first siren captured, but the only one Kian still keeps prisoner. Song muted and terror paralyzed, Pearl's hope for escape finally rekindles as another pirating vessel steals Kian's ship. This new captain seems different, with his brilliant smile and his promises that Kian will never again be Pearl's master. But he's still a human, and a captor in his own way. The compassion he and his ragtag human family show can't be sincere. Or can it? Soon, it becomes clear that Kian will hunt Pearl relentlessly, taking out any siren in her path. As the tides turn, Pearl must decide whether to run from Kian forever or ride the forming wave into battle, hoping these newfound human companions will fight with them. Let's get right into it, shall we? As this book is YA, I'm going to try to channel my inner teenager, because right now my inner adult has a different take. So did teenage me like this book, and why? Teenage me, especially younger teenage me, would have really enjoyed this book. I'm going to say despite the, er, I can't call it cannibalism, the rather carnivorous nature of our main character Pearl, the siren slash mermaid, this book is written for a younger teenage audience. Though an older teenager, younger college age adult audience will enjoy this book too if they're seeking a certain amount of representation and a nice light read. Yes, there is lots of representation in this book. We have the asexual romantic pirate captain and the siren slash mermaid. The siren slash mermaid is dealing with a disability. The pirate captain's first mate and his sole sister are in a lesbian romance. I'm also fairly certain that Dejan is a person of color, or at least that's how I interpreted it. It never really comes up in a useful fashion, which is cool because it shouldn't have to be brought up or made a central focus, instead let this character have adventures. So there is a lot of representation here. Once again, I feel I have to point out this book is written in present tense. If you don't like present tense, then this book is going to have an extra hurdle. Maybe I ought to be doing an author tube on present tense. I think this book, if it had been written in past tense, might have been able to break into traditional publishing. Yes. This is a compliment. It is also in first person. If it had been one or the other, first person or present tense, it would have had a broader appeal. As it is, you have to like both first person and present tense to be able to dive into it right off the springboard. Teenage Me is giving this book four ginger snaps. Teenage Me kept reading because Teenage Me liked the found family dynamics so the humans Pearl found herself among. Teenage Me enjoyed the budding chemistry romance between the siren slash mermaid and the human. Teenage Me enjoyed the action bits. Danny knows how to write a tense action scene, get you on the edge of your seat and bite your nails type of action scene. Oh no, what are, will they do to get out of this one this time? This is, quite frankly, the tropey sort of story that Teenage Me would have eaten up with a spoon, defended the siren and the human to the death, and probably gone on to write fanfic of about to fill in the holes of stuff that Danny didn't tell us about. And by that I mean world building, and probably making Dijon the human captain into a siren or something. Teenage Me is happily hoping for more adventures featuring different sirens off in the great wide ocean now the main villain has been vanquished. Because that is what Danny promises us at the end of the book. Adult 
Adult Me is giving this book three ginger snaps. Adult Me is pickier and very much in conflict with Teenage Me. There be spoilers ahead, mateys. The plot is laid out in such a way Murphy's Law is very much in play. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong with the external plot beats. And teenagers, to an extent, again, will eat this type of thing up with a spoon. So teenagers like Murphy's Law and cute fun family moments, which is why Teenage Me gave it four ginger snaps. Adult Me keeps waiting for something to go wrong with the found family dynamics and for Pearl to actually take charge and do something. For an adult reader, the tension setting of this book wiggles up and down like a heart meter instead of building and building up to a crescendo. These found family moments, instead of contributing to character building or plot and giving me a place to rest, seem to make me irritated and ask if we can get to the point already, or at least introduce a character involved in the external plot enough to make the plot beat later in this very tropey story make sense. Spoiler! If you insist on putting a betrayal of everything one of the main characters holds dear into your story, then you must, and I do mean must, have the reader spend time with the character doing the betraying. Elizabeth Swan chaining Jack Sparrow to the mast for the Kraken wouldn't have been as powerful or shocking if Elizabeth Swan had been off screen for 95% of the movie. Instead, she was an integral character. Please, Make your betrayers beloved integral characters instead of plot cannon fodder. Emotional impact. You want it. Thank you. And spoiler. Adult Me also felt that everything foreshadowed was pretty much outright told flat out to the reader beforehand as part of Murphy's Law. Sometimes it's better just to do things instead of saying, oh, so-and-so is going to blab because they're so-and-so and that is their character trait. This is difficult especially if you are an outliner. I have been there. This is a very plot-driven story, and given that it is in first person, it is very awkward. Things are happening to Pearl, instead of Pearl taking action and doing things to cause consequences. Spoiler! So, the end of the story to me, an adult, who has read this type of ending many times before, and it is nails on cliff faces, isn't very satisfying because, oh my god, you just want something to go right and the main character to rise up and prevail in such a way that it is her idea from the beginning to end because she supposedly now has the means. To have that choice ripped away from the character last minute is, well, going along with the cliche trope of the story thus far instead of lampshading or subverting it. Yay, the character prevails and does so in a very interesting and satisfying manner. Not yay, because she had her choice stripped away from her and was put back into the power of the villain before it happened. So, in a way, the blurb I read you at the beginning doesn't really describe or do justice to this book, because the blurb makes it sound like Pearl is going to rise up and take action against Keon of her own impetus. And while Pearl does want to take on Keon, her deeds, her actions, don't end up causing it to happen. Kian swoops in, and then it happens later. Pearl loses her agency slash power slash ability to act at an integral moment, and it leaves a sour taste in my mouth as I read this type of ending again. In my opinion, this book is geared more towards 14-year-olds than 16-year-olds, so having this type of ending won't bug a 14-year-old. In fact, 14-year-old me would have gone, Oh no, what is Pearl going to do? Nail-biting ensues. And 16-year-old or older teenage me would roll their eyes. It's 21 and up me that um gets annoyed. So the ending is fine for the age bracket. And spoiler. Lastly, adult me wish for some more world-building and character-building. Give this book, oh, 50 more pages. I didn't learn a lot about Pearl other than she likes to eat meat, and sing, and loves the ocean. Honestly, I'm going to assume most sirens slash mermaids eat meat, sing, and love the ocean. What makes Pearl special? She has clownfish biology. Is there more than that? Same with Dejan. What makes Dejan special outside of his, oh, sirens are beings too, that are going to make us want to stay with these characters for more adventures? What about their steampunk world makes steampunk integral? Show me, don't tell, the siren's way of life. 
So please imagine teenage me and adult me holding a book in one hand and flailing at each other with them while teenage me goes, it's a fun book! And adult me, and adult me goes, it could be better, give me more to latch onto! And maybe you'll get the idea of the conflict I'm having. One moment, I drop my mouse. <laughs> This is also a way of saying Adult Me really did enjoy this book. Adult Me enjoyed the book enough I wanted it to be longer, to go more in depth, to have more words. And my lovelies, this is exactly the sort of thing you want your story to do. So do you love mermaids? Like light fun, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong stories, and want slash need representation in your life? Then Our Bloody Pearl might be the book for you. You can find it on Amazon. Link in the description below. Once again, thank you, Danny, for giving me your book. I did enjoy reading it. Enjoy watching me talk about books? Or find this review informative? Then please hit that like or subscribe button. And if there's a book you'd like me to review, leave me a comment with a buy link or go to my website, ginny0.wordpress.com. That's ginny, then number 0.wordpress.com, and get in contact with me there. Speaking of my website, that's where you can find me and all the information about my character-driven, found family, werewolf, science fantasy, and fantasy books. You can also find me on Twitter at GinnyZero. My books are available on Amazon and are enrolled in Kindle Unlimited. Next time, hopefully, we shall continue with our mermaid books for Mermaid. See you in the next video, my lovelies!